RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, and first in television, presents Transcribe, the Phil Harris, Alice Faye Show. For your enjoyment, here is the Phil Harris, Alice Faye Show, written by Ray Singer and Dick Chevrolet, with Elliot Lewis, Walter Tetley, Robert North, Janine Roos, Ann Whitfield, Walter Sharp and his music, yours truly, Bill Foreman, and our special guests, Dean Martin and Jerry Lewis. Ordinarily, Phil is a brave man, and he fears nothing. But tonight, even he trembles a little when he finds out what the sponsor has planned for him. But more about that later. First, a word from RCA Victor. If you have a radio lying around the house that hasn't worked for months, chances are you don't have to give it up for lost. Probably it can easily be restored to its original fine performance. If you learn that weak or worn-out receiving tubes are the cause of your radio's troubles, have your serviceman replace them with top-quality RCA tubes. You can depend on RCA tubes to give you the best reception your radio can deliver. So whatever make of radio you own, when tubes fail, be sure they're replaced with RCA tubes. Look for the colorful red, white, and black RCA tube cartons on your serviceman's shelves or in his carrying case. Dependable, long-lasting RCA radio receiving tubes will help your radio perform at its best. Yet, they cost you no more. And now the stars of the RCA Victor program, Alice Faye and Phil Harris. All this week, Phil has been appearing at the automobile show in San Francisco. During his absence, the sponsor has hired Martin and Lewis to take his place on today's radio program. When Phil heard about this, he flew down from San Francisco to protect his interests. Phil has just arrived home, and he and Alice are discussing the situation. Alice, what's the matter with our sponsor hiring Martin and Lewis to substitute for me on today's show? Is he crazy or something? Why are you so upset about Martin and Lewis taking your place? Are you afraid they're too good? What are you talking about? <laughs> Why should I be afraid of them guys? Just because Dean Martin is good looking and sings good and Jerry Lewis is very funny doesn't mean that I'm afraid. I'm not afraid. I just wish I was dead. <laughs> I ain't gonna let them be on my show. Oh, but Phil, the sponsor's already signed them and you just have to let them be on. Then I'm gonna be on with them. Well, that won't be necessary. We have a wonderful show lined up. And if you insist on being in it, you'll only mess it up. I didn't mean I know I, what I, you I... mean. <laughs> you just don't want me on the show. Nobody wants me on the show. Now, that's not true, Phil. I want you on the show, and so does Elliot. Why, only yesterday he was saying he's going to miss your singing, and the show won't be as funny without you. He said that? Uh-huh. Ha-ha. <laughs> yeah, good old Elliot. I knew I could count on him. That boy always stands up for me. When he's able to stand. <laughs> he also said that... Come in. Hi, Alice. Well, you all ready to do the show with Martin and Lewis tonight? Oh, we're going to have a great show without Curly. Elliot. Of course, the show ain't going to be half as funny without Curly. Without his singing, what's there to laugh at? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's just as well he went to San Francisco. Elliot. Ma'am. Turn around and look in back of you. Yeah, Okay. Hey, it must be a clear day. I can see Curly all the way up there in San Francisco. <laughs> he looks a little hazy, but then he always does. Hiya, Curly. Drop us a card. <laughs> oh, that's silly. He couldn't hear me all the way up there. I heard you. Ooh, he's here. <laughs> Curly, I thought you were up north. How'd you get back so fast? I flew back this morning. I didn't know there were any planes out of San Francisco this morning. There weren't. Well, then how did you fly? I just got a running start and away I went. <laughs> <laughs> well, certainly good to have you back. Alice and me have a great show with Martin and Lewis as our guests, so don't forget to stay home tonight and listen to it. You couldn't get me a ticket to watch the show, could you? Well, I'm afraid not, sir. The tickets are all gone. Never mind. <laughs> I'm going to be on the show, if it's okay with you. That's okay with me, Curly But I don't know what you're gonna do Jerry and me will do all the jokes Alice and Dean will do all the singing 
Is there anything else you can do? Well, I can play the comb and tissue paper. <laughs> or I can smile like Liberace. <laughs> you can't tell it from the real thing. Or I do a sensational Mexican hat dance. I do it on a Hamburg. <laughs> the curved brim makes it more difficult. I'm always going uphill. <laughs> that might be entertaining. Never mind. I'm going to sing and I'm going to show you that it sounds something like this. Long, long ago in New Orleans, on a little street of dreams, there I heard a crazy band. This is where the blues began. There was Memphis Joe with his hidey home moaning on his saxophone. There was Slip on Slim, you've heard of him, and his lap and slide trombone. Peg Lake Pete playing hot and sweet on the bacon pot of can. As they played, people swayed, this is where the blues began. There was Dog Face Jet with his clarinet hitting high notes up and down. Okey Moke was there with his slick black hair beating his drums like a clown. While the Booga 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 of a big brown jug by a hepcat dressed in jeans. This is where the blues was born in New Orleans. There was Big Nose Tess from the greasy vest weeping in her glass of beer. There was Gambler Jake playing table stakes with a seaboat engineer. Natchez Lil, she was dressed to kill, singing love songs about her man. As she moaned, them people groaned, this is where torch songs began. Then the cat named Sam in from Alabama started shooting up the flow. Everybody broke through the pistol smoke through the windows and the door. While the roar, roar, roar of a 44 busted up those happy scenes. This is how the blues were born in New Orleans. How was that? I don't know. Let's see the Mexican hat dance. <laughs> What's the matter? Don't you people like my voice? Oh, your voice is fine, Phil. But with Dean Martin on the show, the girls will be waiting for him to sing because he has a romantic voice and you don't. Ah, oh, you kidding. <laughs> happens to be my business. You want a romantic voice? I'll... I'll give him my velvet fog job with a Von Monroe float. <laughs> Do you mean to tell me you can sing a romantic ballad like Dean Martin? Of course I can. It's a cinch. Listen to this. See the pyramids along the night. <laughs> Watch the sun rise on a tropic isle. Just remember, darling... All the while, you belong to me. <laughs> See the marketplace at old Algiers. <laughs> Send me photographs and souvenirs. Anybody home or from the groceries? Just remember when a dream appears, you belong to me. <laughs> in pain. <laughs> Julius, that's not a cow. It's Mr. Harrop. What's the matter? Is he having a bilious attack? <laughs> <laughs> Mole is here. Look, I wasn't having no bilious attack. I was singing in my romantic voice. Oh, I know, Mr. Harris, and I want to tell you that when I came in and heard that voice, I had all I could do to control the emotions that was raging within me. Oh, really? <laughs> What kind of emotions? Nausea, hot brain, and a quiver in me liver. <laughs> All right. And it dissolves two of me gallstones. <laughs> hey, Curly, sing another chorus and direct it toward my feet. Maybe it'll cure my gout. <laughs> sing at your own feet. That hot muscatel breath will drive anything away. <laughs> Don't bother to take your shoes off. It'll get through. Mr. Harris, you're supposed to be in San Francisco. What are you doing back? I came back here to appear on my radio show tonight I don't trust that Martin and Lewis They're liable to get too funny Then I'm gonna lose my job You don't 
don't have to worry about losing your job. I don't? Of course not. If you get fired, a guy with your looks, voice, and talent, there's nothing to worry about except trying to find another job. <laughs> Now, Julius, Mr. Harris could get another job in a minute. He's a very talented man. Oh, I know. In fact, only this morning I was lying on the couch thinking out loud and I was saying, Phil Harris is the funniest man on the radio. He has the greatest voice and he's the best looking guy I've ever seen. And I also think that's as far as I got. Why? Me psychiatrist made me get off the couch for his next patient. <laughs> So are you going to a psychiatrist? Yeah, my father insisted. He says there's something wrong with my little head. <laughs> Look, kid, if you're having trouble with your head, don't waste your time with a psychiatrist. Take it to a taxidermist. <laughs> Better yet, drill three holes in it and we can bowl it around till we get the kinks out of it. <laughs> getting late. We're supposed to be at NBC for rehearsal. We don't want to keep Martin and Lewis waiting. All right, I'm coming. You know something? I can't wait to get on that show with them two guys. I'll show them a thing or two about how to be funny. Mr. Harris, you're actually going to appear on the same show with Martin and Lewis? Yeah. Oh, I got to go along and watch this slaughter. <laughs> oh, are they going to barbecue this ham hock? <laughs> <laughs> Well, the cast is all here. Everybody except Martin and Lewis. Oh, they're not here yet, huh? Good. Let's start the show. Maybe we can get it done before they get here. Well, you really are worried. Are you afraid that they're going to be funnier than you are? It's possible. After all, they have an advantage over me. They're natural comedians, whereas I'm really a lover. <laughs> <laughs> Just toying with comedy. So that's why I get hysterical every time you kiss me. <laughs> Don't give away our family secrets, or I'll take away your electric blanket. <laughs> oh, but frankly, I am a little worried. These guys are big stars, and, well, with them on the show, nobody's gonna pay no attention to me. Hey, Curly. Uh, they don't have to be on the show. What do you mean? These guys are accustomed to having people treat them like big stars and make a fuss over them, so all we have to do is ignore them, not pay any attention to them. Yeah. We'll make believe we don't even know who they are, and they might get insulted and leave. Yeah, that's a great plan, fellas, but they'll never know what we're doing to them as long as we don't tell them. So let's make a pact. Let's all swear not to tell them. Hey, that's a good idea. I swear not to tell them. I swear not to tell them. I swear not to tell them. <laughs> How about you, Julius? I'm too young to swear I'll have to tell him <laughs> Keep your big trap closed Now look, this is important to all of us Now it's agreed That when they come in We'll all act as if we don't know who they are Now I don't want nobody Bye, Fooling around <laughs> Gentlemen, it's a pleasure for us to be here. He's here for the pleasure. I'm here for the money. <laughs> now, Jerry, please. Folks, we feel honored to have been asked to appear on one of America's great family shows, don't we, Jerry? Oh, but of course. It is indeed a pleasure to be the guest of those two lovable personalities, Mom, Pa, Kettle. <laughs> Jerry, their names happen to be Alice and Phil. By gad, I goof. Yeah. <laughs> I shall try it again. It's a pleasure to be the guests of Alice and Phil Kettle. <laughs> and now my partner, Dean Martin, he's the foreign-looking gentleman on my right, will sing for you. Isn't he pretty, girls? Oh, he's such a dog. Go ahead and sing for the people, Deanie, darling. I don't care if the sun don't shine to get my loving in the evening time. Stop, that's enough. Don't make it too long. The money's short. Folks, we like it too long. <laughs> but you've been such a wonderful audience. We're running over. So good night, everyone. Good night, everybody. We said good night. Go home already. Lady, you in the third row. Put your shoes on and get out of here. Are you college boys finished? 
If you are, go back to your fraternity house and tell them that your initiation was a big success. Dean, he thinks I'm a college boy. Uh, well, it must be your haircut. It looks like a foxtail hanging from a hot rod. <laughs> oh, ho, that's rich. Yeah. <laughs> Look, we're not college boys. Our names are Martin and Lewis. We work for NBC and they sent us down here. Oh, ho, then you must be the maintenance men. What happened to the two charwomen that usually clean up? <laughs> Just a minute, buddy. <laughs> we're, we're busy now. You can come back after the show and scrape the gum from under the seats. <laughs> Dean, he don't know us. What's the matter with him? I don't know. He doesn't look like a drinking man. <laughs> <laughs> I resent that. <laughs> Look, fellas, I don't know who you are, but you'll have to get off the stage. We got a show to put on there. That's what we're here for. We're the guests on the show. Oh, oh. What type of work do you do? Oh, we're funny men. We tell jokes. We'll give you away, for instance. Dean, let's give him number 22A. <laughs> Splendid, Jerry. Yeah, that's a real old whiz bang, Jerry. Were you a pretty baby? I don't know. All I know is the day I was born, my father called the insurance company and said, I want to report an accident. <laughs> <laughs> Dean, he don't like it. <laughs> well, Jerry, you see... Uh, I like it. Why he don't like it? I don't know why he don't like it. I like it. I like it. I like her. She's my type. <laughs> oh, thanks. You're a pretty one, my dear. We were meant for each other. Let me take you away from all this. Shall we go to a cocktail bar and lounge? <laughs> Wait a minute, Jerry. This is my wife. She's Alice Faye. Alice Faye. Ho, ho. She's rich. <laughs> hey, look, fellas. Like I told you, we got a show to do, and we can't be bothered by a couple of tourists coming All in. All right. Hold it down there, Phil. Break it up. What are you trying to do? You know who we are. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Yeah. I know who you are, Dean. I was just pretending I didn't know you fellas. Yeah. Why did you do that? What's the matter? Don't you want us on a show? You're afraid we're funnier than you are? Well, it's not that at all. It's just that we do a family show, and I don't know whether you'd fit into it. Why shouldn't I fit into a family show? I come from a family. <laughs> family of what? <laughs> <laughs> of course, if you fellas think you'd like to take a crack at this type of show, we're going to be glad to have you. The script's already. Do we have funny lines? Do you have funny lines? <laughs> Do you have funny lines? Dean, he ain't answering the question. <laughs> well, you just stop worrying. We'll find out if we have any funny lines when we re rehearse the script. Oh, no. Look, fellas, you don't have to rehearse. You're too clever to rehearse. I tell you what. The show goes on in an hour, so you fellas just go to your dressing rooms and relax. A splendid suggestion. A cup of hot tea and my yogi exercises would put me in the pink. Come along, Beanie darling. And look, don't worry about nothing now, because when the show's ready to go on, I'll call you, fellas. I'll get you. Hey, Elliot. What? Didn't work. We're stuck with them. What do we do now? They're going to be funny on this show and murder me. Why do they have to be funny? Because I saw the script and their lines are very funny. We have an hour in which to make their lines very unfunny. Oh, you mean change the script? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, they'd make excellent straight men. Sure. Shall we have a go at it? Phil, I just sent Julius to get Martin and Lewis And you'd better get ready The show goes on in a minute Good, good I can't wait to get started Say, you don't seem to be too worried anymore About Dean and Jerry being too funny Don't worry, they won't be You see, Elliot and I just rewrote their parts You mean you... The comedy lines we gave them Shouldn't happen to H.V. Kaltenborn <laughs> them nothing but straight lines? Oh, I wouldn't say that. We gave them such humorous gems as, what is it? Well, and heart the doorbell. <laughs> Not to mention such side splitters as, goodness gracious, it's grandmother. Anyone for tennis? And there'll be immediate seating in the balcony, sir. Phil, 
Well, I don't think you should do that. I really don't. Well, we're all ready to go on, Phil. You can start the show now. Oh, good, Dean, good. We're going to do a sketch. Before you start that show, Mr. Harris, I want to know, do we have any funny lines? Now, the sketch is a romantic triangle. Dean, why you don't answer the question? (laughs) Alice and I play a husband and wife, and you guys are her lovers. That sounds friendly, but do we have funny lines? Oh... Yeah, you might say that. <laughs> no, no. No. <laughs> what are you crying about? He answered the question. Yeah, but I don't like the answer. <laughs> of course you have funny lines, Jerry. Look, you and Dean have all the jokes. Alice and me have nothing but straight lines. Now stand by. Okay, we're ready to go on the air. For your enjoyment, here is the Alice Faye Phil Harris Show with their special guest, that famous team. Tonight, we present a dramatic playlet starring Alice Faye and Phil Harris. The names of all other characters in this play are fictitious. Dean fictitious and Jerry fictitious. As our play opens, our heroine is at home. Ah, my husband's gone at last. And here I am alone with my lovers, Dean and Jerry. Gee, it isn't every girl who has one and a half lovers. Dean, darling, now that we're alone, tell me how you feel about me. Pour out your heart and tell me everything you feel. Well... Oh, that's what I wanted to hear. (laughs) And you, Jerry, I want to hear the same thing from you. Tell me how you feel about me. Well... You say it even better than he does. (laughs) I guess I'm more passionate. (laughs) Oh, Jerry... You've always been the only man in my life. And every time I look at you, there's one question that comes to my mind. I must know. I must know. What is it? Are you for real? <laughs> <laughs> right. Not only do they not give me funny lines, they steal my character. Where are the funny jokes already? <laughs> well, I can't decide between the two of you. You, Dean, you're so manly. So strong, so handsome. (laughs) And you, Jerry, you're so, 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 so. (laughs) I know what I'll do. I'll just have to... Hark the doorbell. (laughs) Boy, that joke was so big it took two of us to handle it. I know who that is. Well, we might as well face it and get it over with. Come in. Aha! So at last I caught you. Goodness gracious, it's grandmother. (laughs) It's who? Grandmother, that's what it says on the paper here. But that line don't make sense. You think that line don't make sense? Wait till you hear my next line. (laughs) Wait a minute, what's going on here? You fellas are making love to my wife and I'm not gonna stand here and watch this. Do you hear me? I'm not gonna stand here and watch this. There'll be immediate seating in the balcony, sir. (laughs) See what I mean, Dean? Uh Alice, how could you do this to me? You claim you love me, yet I come home and find you in the arms of Laurel and Hardy. Of course I know you. How could I ever forget you? Every spring I see your face on a bottle of Bach beer. (laughs) (laughs) He's getting all the jokes. (laughs) Jerry, please, will you just read your answer? It's a big yawk. Now, let's continue. What are you doing in my house, sir? Do you know who I am? I happen to be... Of course, I know you. I saw your picture in the current issue of the Radio Mirror magazine. This is a yacht. <laughs> Dean, this is a funny line. What are they doing? This is the assassination what? bit. Well, not quite as funny as the line I have coming up. Oh, this one's a smasher. <laughs> what is it? Gee, Ma, you've installed a Culligan water softener. <laughs> Culligan is a funny wife. <laughs> Fellas, please, we've got to finish the script. Why? All I got left is anyone for tennis? <laughs> you got anything left, Jerry? Yeah, I say, follow that tab. <laughs> There's a shot and I drop dead. <laughs> Fellas, will you please? Let's go on with the show. All right, but we're going to do it our way. Hit it, Jerry. 
Sound up. 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 You can't do that. This is the RCA Victor Show. Quiet or I'll burn you with my long playing Chesterfield. <laughs> hey, Dean, I've been taking dancing lessons, and you know something? I can kick over my head. Good. Kick it over here, and I'll kick it back. <laughs> now we're rolling. <laughs> Will you please, fellas? You gotta stop this. Mr. Harris, did you know I used to catch cold a lot? And the doctor said when I go to bed, I should wear a nightcap? I tried it for a week, but I had to stop. Why? The ginger ale kept dripping in my eye. <laughs> that does it. Ring down the curtain. Play the music. Everybody out. Show's on. Alice and Phil will be back in just a moment. The easiest and best way to play your 45 records is with RCA Victor's Victrola 45 Record Changer. It's the simplest, surest, automatic record changer ever made. Why, it's so easy to operate, even a child can do it. And here are the reasons. There are no troublesome posts to adjust. Records slip on the large center spindle so easily you can load up to 14 45 RPM records with one hand. And because the Victrola 45 has the changing mechanism in the spindle, records change from the center the simple, modern way. And here's something you may not realize. 45's the lowest priced automatic changer today, by far. Ask to see the automatic Victrola 45 attachment. There's no other automatic changer within twice the price. RCA Victor's automatic 45 attachment, which can play through any radio, phonograph, or TV set, costs as little as $16.75 Eastern list price. You can enjoy all the advantages of the 45 system in RCA Victor's automatic three-speed players, too. These have the same ingenious large spindle as the one on the Victrola 45 player. But on the three-speed changer, this spindle is removable, so you can play your 78 and long play records on the smaller spindle. Choose the player design for your record collection from the wide assortment of automatic Victrola 45 players and automatic three-speed players at your RCA Victor dealers. This is Phil again. Folks, I want to thank Dean Martin and Jerry Lewis for coming over here and helping us so wonderfully with our little show. I'm going to tell you something. No wonder these two guys have been so successful because... Well, they're just regular guys. They do so many wonderful things for so many people that they've got to be successful. <laughs> the 1953 Red Cross Fund needs $93 million to help our servicemen and women to conduct the vital blood program and to aid victims of disaster. Answer the call. Contribute generously to the American Red Cross. Thanks, everyone, for being so nice, and good night. Good night, everybody. Included in this program transcribed were Dean Martin and Jerry Lewis, who may be seen currently in the Paramount picture, The Stew. The part of Julius was played by Walter Tetley. The wonderful songs from two of Broadway's hit musicals are now on RCA Victor Records. From the musical comedy, Wish You Were Here, the original cast sings the popular title song and three other hits. And the stars of Leonard Silman's New Faces sing four of their review's top numbers. Listen to these new show music albums, New Faces and Wish You Were Here, at your record dealers tomorrow. They're only $1.50 each on RCA Victor's 45 Extended Play Records. Next, hear Theatre Guild on the air over NBC.